My name's Ed Miller. And I'm Jack. And together with, along with Two Dan, months. Faulkner and Joe Whitehead, we asked for a cycle to Manchester. From Tame. Yeah, in Oxfordshire. 180 miles with, in aid of the Jack O'Donnell Foundation. And off he goes to the land of the beyond. Bicycle, bicycle. Bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle, bicycle, bicycle. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride it where I like. Yeah, obviously I was pretty nervous. Never have done a lot, a lot of training. But I was so excited as we were about to, knew I was going to raise a lot of money for charity. I was nervous for everyone else, really. I was more nervous for, like, everyone else other than myself, because I knew I'd be able to do it all right. Done it before. Yeah, because I did it before. We could have been a lot more organised. Yeah. Looking back on it. Pretty much, again, on the organisation sort of side of things, we only managed to get one rack. Yeah. to put bags on and the others we just had rucksacks so pretty much Dan was left with all the equipment yeah we had two two man tents and they were both racked on Dan's rack on his back of his bike the only bike with a rack and then we went out of my house turned around the corner me, Joe and Rack were up ahead and then we turned around and was like where's Dan so I cycled back up to the house he was just like hey what it's it fell off. And I was like, what do you mean it fell off? And he was like, it's just not tied to it. I was like, oh. So we ditched the tent yeah, early doors. So from the start, really, we were a bit because We had a two-man tent for four people. Yeah. The first day was horrible. And we wanted to make up about 50, 60 miles on the first day. I think we only made 35. Yeah. Pretty good considering the weather though. It was hor it was like non stop <laughs> rain, the whole thing. Like blistering cold winds, waterproofs, all our tents and everything was soaked. I was soaked through. I was freezing, like camping up, setting up the tent, that was horrible. Big everything clear. was damp in the morning. And we had two lovely days. Yeah, we had we had protein bars. Yeah. To help us on the way. We had energy bars. Mars stopped bars. off for a few meals. But no, it was fast. It was fast food. It wasn't yeah. good food. I just lived on chocolate bars really for three days. They're good though. <laughs> <laughs> on the second day, Joe White. I think we were. Yeah, Joe had a few punctures. I think we had one on the first day, actually, as well, didn't we? Yeah. yeah, we had one on the first day. After, Out. like, 15 miles of cycling, yeah. we had our in. first puncture. And then fixed that. Had another puncture that same day, I think. I had a couple just towards the end, five miles from the end as well. Heartbreaking. Just because just of the punctures, on the big. second day, we couldn't, like... On the th we could only go like I think we did less miles on the first the second day than we did on the first day because of all the punctures even though the weather was nice it was nice weather like sun was out but then it was our fault we should have taken a pump yeah <laughs> we should we have taken have some inner tubes so no, again we we've learned from our mistakes I don't think we really prepared no nah. Just we just knew that we had to do it. And we'd, we'd made a, we'd had a schedule. Yeah, and we fell far behind. But like we had to do it in three days, and it was the third day. So, like... The fact it was for charity pushed us through. Yeah, we were all like, right, today, tomorrow, we've got to get there. And we looked on the map. I, like, knew how far it was, because I had the map. But I didn't tell anyone else, like, how actually far it was, because... Dan was just moaning, like, being moaning Myrtle the whole way. So if I told him, like, yeah, Dan, tomorrow we're doing 120 miles, he would have just been like, no. We're all pretty <laughs> negative, to be fair. When yeah. we realised how many miles we actually had to do. 
in the morning we set off we made sure we set off before nine so we had like again in the four man tent we had like five hours sleep because Dan kept waking up with cramp so we woke up Eve burned his sleeping bag I Dan threw away the tent so we, we were like right we have to get there and that was it we were off on the road again on a mission last 20 miles they were hard but they Buxton. were all right we cycled. Buxton's pretty much on the top of a big hill yeah and you you just go down for about 10 miles just all through the Lake Peak district mm. roll all the way down to Stockport we got there pretty late though which was a shame because we got there at like I'd say about 10 p.m. Yeah, after 10, cycle, started cycling at 9 a.m. so it's already 13 hours. To, only two of the bikes had lights on them. So, <laughs> this hill is like literally it's like 20 minutes just downhill. Like so, like Ted was himself. Still going up. Yeah. The, the donations, but nearly 400 pound I think now. Yeah. Target was 200. When we left, it was like 160. We were like, all right, that's pretty cool. And then, by the because we couldn't check our phones very much because of battery, we, when we did check our phones, it was like 220, like sick. Maybe it was like 260, we were like awesome. And now it's like 370. They help people that can't either can't afford to get to do their activities or aren't able to compete or take part in activities and they just fund them. Yeah, like fund help people, kids. Yeah, sponsor. For, like kids to get into sport and stuff rather than... To give, give more people opportunities. Jack O'Donnell was an elite sportsman who was fortunate enough to find a sport he loved and to receive the support he needed, both financial and practical to enable him to achieve his potential. Tragically, in the summer of 2010, just as Jack was looking forward to his 16th birthday, he suffered a fatal accident. Despite medical efforts, Jack passed away on the 27th of July. The Jack O'Donnell Foundation's primary aim is to give other children the inspiration and support that Jack received, so that they too can achieve their potential in the sport they love. It is also their aim to fund life-changing and life-saving medical treatment to young people who are in great need, just as Jack was.